welcome to Renaissance Unity, a ministry that teaches an empowering way of life. We hope you enjoy today's inspiring message. So God, there are times in which we want to pray, but there's so many things that are going on in our life, we don't even know where to begin. Our heart can be so heavy with some of the issues, some of our fears, some of the things that come up as we focus in on the future and we don't know what it holds. And so it gives us heartburn, it gives us anxiety. What what can we do, God, as we have just life issues? Sometimes there, <laughs> there aren't any answers. We can't figure it out. So that's the reason why we come to you today, God, in, in a special prayer time. Prayer that is so deep that we're saying, help us, God. Lead us. Direct us. Something that is greater than this mental confusion that we're steeped in and this fear-based anxiety that is surrounded by negative vibration thinking. We want to be free from that so that we can live the life that you've designed us to live. So our prayer, God, is just to free us from all of this way of thinking and create within us a new mind, a new heart with a new thought and a new vibration so we can live heaven on earth. Because we know that sometimes we don't know. But the main thing that we do know is that you know. We're turning it over to you. Special prayer. You know within our minds and hearts before we even utter it. And with that... We're so thankful for this opportunity to pray. So with an attitude of gratitude, we are now saying that what's in our minds and what's in our hearts now, some miracle is now happening that is manifesting some good. New condition. A new healing. The relationship that was closed is now somehow creating a new opportunity for healing. The financial situation is now turning a corner. This is our prayer. God, we're now not seeking the logical solution. We're seeking the spiritual identity that is at the heart of it. So bless us. Bless this ministry. Bless our families. And as you do, bless this world. As we're saying that in this very moment, now something has shifted. And the shift has taken place within us. A new love and a new attitude of gratitude is now the order of the day. We're ready for our miracle. We're claiming our miracle. We're affirming our miracles in the name and through the power and the authority of Jesus the Christ. And let the church say amen. What else is there? You know, we make it so complexified. It's so spiritual. Let's complexify the complex. 
because we're so smart. Pra praise and gratitude for all the mercy you have shown me, for all the things you've spared me from. Praise and gratitude for all the storms you brought me through. This focuses on the storm, right? And then the drama. And don't you love it? <laughs> it's so juicy. What would we talk about if we stopped talking about that? So if you didn't complain, you weren't upset, you didn't mind, that's God calling. <laughs> what would you say if God called? Hello, I'm busy. <laughs> Can't you see I'm doing something important? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the ears, for the hearing that I have that just heard that. Yes. Thank you for the music of it. Thank you for the genius that created the music, the technology that brought it to my ear. Thank you, it wasn't mine. <laughs> Thank you. What if, so now this is, this is the invitation of the morning. What if your answer was thank you? What if your attitude was gratitude? What if it was praise and thanksgiving? It's thanksgiving after all. What if we made thanksgiving thanks living? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Come over, we're having a happy Thanksgiving dinner. Glad you could come. And I'll let you know up front, I've stopped complaining this month. It may be quiet. <laughs> Our meal could be in silence. And if you catch me complaining, point it out to me. Yes. I'm insane. <laughs> I'm under the hold of something that I haven't come out from under completely yet. So if I fall asleep, if I go blind to the bounty, to the praise, to the mercy that I have in my life, and I can't see it, you point it out to me. Please, point that out to me. Wake me up to it. If I'm asleep. It feels good to sing that, don't it? Yes. Like praise and thanksgiving. It's like it shows us our nature. And then this kicks in. I don't have that. I don't have that. I can't go there. I can't do that. Oh, well. What can I do? What do I have? Where can I go? Reality. Reality so much kinder, so much clearer, so much more merciful than what I can't do, where I can't go, what I don't have. And then, you know, this is really about living this out. It's like we sing, we feel better. It's like, oh, church was wonderful. It's like, well, what'd they say? I don't know. <laughs> it feels good. People hug me. I get coffee. And... <laughs> wow. So what they say. So look around at somebody right beside of you and say, glad you came today. Now look directly back at the same person and say, 
but this message is for me. <laughs> so here it comes. So this is about living it out. Living it out. What if when you woke up this morning, when you woke up this morning, what if all you had to your name was what you thanked God for yesterday? What if all I had today was what I thanked God for yesterday? Now, in the spirit of love and in the spirit of God, as you reflect on this for yourself, please do so dropping the shame, drop the blame, drop the guilt, drop the regret. Have you had enough of that? Jim calls them the big four. <laughs> Have you had enough of the big four for, for the rest of your life? Yeah. No blame, no blame, no blame, no shame, no guilt, no regret over what's over. Yeah. It's over, my favorite. And without that, can I take an honest assessment of where I'm really living this out? And wake up to what would my life be? Who would I be in life if I were living it out? If I actually thanked God. If I was grateful for what I have. So we've prepared a little practice for us. So this is your invitation for 21 days. And those of you watching with, from your homes and businesses and your pajamas and coffee, <laughs> we welcome you to download this and join us. This is the transformation of our lives. This is the transformation of our ministries and of our world, I believe. Gratitude is not only a virtue, it is also part of a practical spiritual living, a practical application of spiritual practices. One power and one presence, that is God. There's one power and one presence, that is God. How aware am I am of that? How grateful am I am to that? How grateful how can I serve that? How can I be in communion with that? The prayer and meditation. Gratitude. There is no wiser way of living than to remember every morning. And of course, I have to change everything because I'm trying to run the world. So <laughs> on mine, I inserted, there is no wiser way of living than to remember every morning and every night. Every morning and every night what life has given me, what I have, what life has given us, and to lift our thoughts up, to change our thoughts, to change our perspective, to change my perception to what I have and what I am grateful for that I have. So the booklet is designed for 21 days to find 10 things a day for you to be grateful for. I've put another little twist on it. Two, actually. Don't repeat anything. <laughs> like, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry to live out God in my heart. I'm in a hurry for peace. I'm in a hurry to express and to be God's love and life here on the earth. So don't repeat anything. Some of you will make it 20. Some of you will go 41 days, 61 days. Something changes when we apply the truth, when we apply this in our lives. Otherwise, it's only a theory. It's 
So this takes the rubber to the road, so to speak. And what if we were grateful not only for the blessings we receive, large and small, but for the blessings that we give people to? What if we're grateful for what we've been spared from? So see what it will um, demonstrate for you. See what realizations come through you as you apply this. Now, I'm very interested in seeing your list also because I'm doing my own list, and I've been doing it for a few years, and I know to do this. And you may realize something to be grateful for that I've not realized yet. So you will enlighten me. You can bless me then by sending me your list so that I get to realize what I've realized and I get to realize what you've realized. Enlightenment. And you may find a way here to share it with each other, with your groups or something like that so that you multiply exponentially the blessings of your own reflection, your own practices. I also have dedicated what I'm calling a scholarship or something, like it's a gift that I have in mind for the list that I get that is the most inspiring to me personally. And I've done this for a few years. And the woman that I gave this to last kept a gratitude list for 90 days. And it was mind-blowing to me what she had realized to be grateful for that I hadn't realized. I was so inspired by her list. And the one thing that I remember, I was just reading it like, wow, wow, like I never thought of it. I never thought of it. I never thought of it. And my favorite one from her list was a broom. She was grateful for a broom. And that day... Something shifted in me. And for those of you who were in the 8.30 service, I have Kleenex. <laughs> and all the tears that have shed through this one in the last few years have been nothing but gratitude. So I don't stop them when they, when they come. I don't stop them. A broom. Because prior to that, this is how I used a broom. This darn dirt. Nobody does anything but me around here. I don't know what they'd do without me. They'd just leave those shoes at the front door. Why is it always me? Why me? Why me? So that day, my relationship with the broom shifted. And with the vacuum cleaner. And with the dish soap. Thank you for the water. Thank you for the soap. Thank you for the dishes. Thank you for the food that was on them just a minute ago. Thank you for the source of it. Thank you that I didn't eat three plates full. <laughs> Thank you. I was mindful enough to stop when it told me to. So there's no shortage of this. So this month, it's been like, thank you for the toothbrush. Thank you for the toothpaste. Thank you for the teeth. Thank you for the smile that comes through these teeth. Thank you for what happens when that sees this smile. A client just contacted me and said, he's never met me, doesn't know a thing about me. And he said, I want you to coach me because I want to smile like you smile. So thank you for that. Thank you for the way I've blessed his life, apparently. Now, I'm glad Jim told y'all he was leaving in the middle of the service because my story about that would have been he took all he could take. Because <laughs> <laughs> on these visits here, I'm aware that it's very challenging. I come as a challenge to you. I can tell you it's very purposeful. 
It's very purposeful. I come to challenge you. I come to support you, to pray with you, to serve with you, and I come to challenge you to shift your perspective from this to something else. And then I come with practices. I got some feedback a few years ago, and they said, you know, the problem with you is you never tell us what to do. That's interesting. My experience is I always tell you what to do. <laughs> so it depends on how you hear it. It's an invitation from my heart to yours. There's no direction. I don't have any answers for you. You have your answers. You have your wisdom. And you know that there's something in your life now that is ready to be changed. It's ready to be transformed. You are ready to shed it like an old coat or an old skin and to free you from that. The prison you're in is of your mind, not of circumstances. And through spiritual practice and through spiritual application and, and work, work at retraining this from the track it runs on to a new track takes a little work as far as I know. So I'm here to invite you to free yourself. And if gratitude is a key for you, that you're in a time now here auspiciously in your ministry to practice gratitude, to, to gratitude, to live it out in a time of thanksgiving, in a time of thanks living, to actually do it. And to test it for yourself. So not what did Martha do, like that won't help you. What did you do? What did you realize about practicing this? What did you realize from writing it down, from pausing a time or two during the day to be aware that there's one power and one presence in your life? To be aware of the mercy and of the grace that's been extended to us. And to be aware that God is real. God is the only reality there is. Amen. And until we shift our perspective and our perception to focus on that, this is what runs it. It's not wrong or right, just one's insane. <laughs> One hurts. One is full of anxiety and stress and fear and panic and terror and worry and need to know, 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 got to know. How's it going to turn out? I don't know. God knows. God knows. And then if we can hold or just subtly, subtly shift into a perspective of the journey of our soul not the journey of circumstances, not the journey of situations, and understand from the perspective of our soul what is real, what is eternal, and what is infinite. Then we can't be upset by much. In a prison once, I saw a facilitator do an exercise with a criminal isn't that an interesting word? What it means is that person followed their thinking. They had a thought to kill and followed it. <coughs> Folks, we're just one thought away from it. Amen. We're just one thought away from doing something we don't want to do. Whatever it is, lying, cheating, stealing, murdering, raping, God knows what. And until we can build enough space in here, enough presence in our mind to be quicker than it is, that's what we're looking at. So the exercise was, he wanted the hardest of the hard to come up with him on the stage, and he said, I want to call you names, blame you, criticize you, humiliate you, slur you, shame you, guilt you. I'm going to get in your face, talk loud. I'm going to like do everything I can to like rob you of your dignity. 
like like really perturb you. And if you can not react, not be upset about that, for 60 seconds, I'm going to give you a $100 bill. <laughs> so the client criminal was like, let's do this. <laughs> Big old smile on his face, arms folded, the facilitators up there, you scum of the earth, you don't deserve to live after all you've done and you're a low life and you're not of God and you ought to be ashamed and loud and spit flying and red face and nostrils out and like right up in his face. <laughs> the 60 seconds is over. The 60 seconds are over. He gave him the $100 bill. And it's like he couldn't take the $100 bill. He started to sob, and he said, I wished I would have known I had a choice. I wished I would have known this back then, that I have the power in me. The power's here in me. The power within me to make a choice and to choose again every time to choose again to choose again so who would you be if between now and thanks living between now and thanksgiving you just decided not to be upset not to be worried. Not to be judgmental. That may be a stretch. <laughs> Particularly for us spiritual types. <laughs> Can you get a sense of this? So just for a few days, literally a few days, what if you just decided to be grateful, to say thank you, to be aware of the mercy, and to be determined, steadfast, resilient in living that out for a few days? Willing to give it a test? Yes. Willing to give it a go to see? Get a sense of it in your body. What it would be like to live as gratitude. What would your life look like if you were living as gratitude? What would your life look like if you weren't upset? Who would you be if you weren't upset? So regardless of what comes in the field, regardless of who calls you back, who doesn't, who likes you, who doesn't, who gives you a present, who doesn't, Regardless of any situation or circumstance, if you simply didn't mind, just for a few days, it's like as a little kid, I saw these giant keys, like a dream or a vision like they went taller than the sky, like, you know, the jack and the beanstalk, tall, like through the clouds, through the eternity. So it's like I was given the keys to life as a kid, and it was gratitude and forgiveness. Pick one. See what it unlocks for you. See what energy is tapped. See what possibility, what potentiality that's waiting, that's compelling you in to the next grandest version of your life.
calling you, like knocking. Look here. Try this. Let's do it a little different. What if? And I want to say how grateful I am for you. I'm in my own practice, you know. This morning, it's, it's just strange what happens that I have cursed the alarm for most of my life. Nobody knows. <laughs> the alarm. Thank you. Thank you for adjusting the time on your own. Thank you for the ears that heard it. Thank you that it was a song. Thank you that when I started to stand up, I did. Legs came. Yeah. Thank you for the warm water, the cool water. Yeah. Thank you for the sparkles I get to wear at Renaissance. <laughs> Thank you for my shoes. Thank you for the cobbler that sewed them back together with a threat to me that he won't sew them again. Because <laughs> they're my favorites. Thank you for the comfort I have in these. Thank you for the miles they've taken me. Thank you. So it's a different morning for me. It's a different life for me. And I'm very grateful to you, Renaissance Unity. I see you as a transformation agent. I see you as a model for bringing this to the earth, a new earth. And I'm privileged to serve here with you in that. I was down yesterday after serving at another ministry to, do, to see the Renaissance Center. That's where our conference is going to be next year in June. So you're host to the whole movement, the Unity Worldwide Movement. And now, yes. And for all of you listening and all of you thinking to come, come, June 2012, the Renzen, the Renaissance Center, a renaissance that's happening right here in your life, in your ministry, and you as people, you then are the models. You are the models for what happens when we apply this to our life. And then I get to stand with you. And my family's teasing me now. When people ask me where I live, I start to say Louisville. And my family says, don't you lie. Don't you lie. You do not live in Louisville. You have a post office box in Louisville. You have to be there more than four nights a month to qualify to live there. And I said, oh, yeah, okay. So I live in Detroit. I live in Detroit. So... Thank you for making me part of your family. And as we close this particular part of it, and we move into a conscious time of prayer, that I want to pray for you and to extend a blessing to you from my own full heart. And I want you to know that I pray for you. So I'm going to read a little prayer. This is from a book called The Christmas Prayer. And you can get it on my website, marthacreek.net, if you're interested in it. So I'm just going to read an excerpt from it today. As we begin to pray again. So I invite you to pray with me or just to open to receive the prayer. And to enter it from a place of gratitude. A place of joy. And if you're interested in living in gratitude and joy, have a bite to eat and then come in that workshop. Because those of us in there this afternoon are in a hurry. You're welcome to join us. I pray for you joy and abundance. Joy and laughter. I pray that your spirits soar. I pray for you a sigh when you need one. Because with a sigh comes acceptance of things we cannot change. The courage to change what we can. The wisdom to know the difference. I pray for you tears when you need them. For tears will clear the stars, will clear our eyes to see the stars. The tears can cleanse our soul. Healing begins again. I pray for you serenity, for in 
our individual heart is where this starts. I pray for you courage, for there may be some pitfalls. And the only way is God guiding us through them. I pray for you compassion as you help yourself compassionately and help others with compassion. I pray for you a willingness to work at this, for work turns our dreams into reality. To work at this. I pray for you unwavering faith, for faith shapes our reality. And faith is our destiny. It draws us closer to God. I pray for you, faith. I pray for you, a mind full of hope. I pray for you, a heart so full of love that you must give it away every day. And I pray that as you pray these prayers, you realize they are for you. And I pray that as you pray these prayers, you realize what a blessing you and they are to the world. And as we pray these prayers, Martha Creek, we also know what a blessing you are to the world and to this ministry. The ushers are going to bring the prayer box, and this is a time of prayer. And I invite you today to, if you have something going on, anybody here got something going on in their life? <laughs> Write it down. I encourage you, if you can, to formulate it from the positive. Praise the answer to your prayer. But however you phrase it, write your prayer up, bring it forward, place it in. I invite you to hold this consciousness of prayer with me. Hold this space with me. A number of, beyond the many, many people who have placed a prayer in the box or who sent a prayer request to our email address, prayer at renaissanceunity.org, we've placed those in the box as well. Today we have several requests that have come to us in the office. We're praying for Deb Cusimano's mother, who's in the hospital. We're praying for our beloved senior minister, Tracy's, or Jim Lee's daughter, Tracy. She's had a rough week this week, and, and a rough week for Jim. So we pray for them and that God is giving them strength. For our beloved friend, Don Chase, who has some challenges with his rehab center. For Debbie Carretero, you recall the wife of our beloved Jose Carretero, our longtime pianist here. Debbie's having surgery in the morning. We know that God is with her. And Larry Dietz, hopefully he's having the very last procedure that he's going to have this coming Tuesday. We know that God is healing his heart. Now pray with me. Almighty God, in your many names, we pray. You have moved in the people of this church to, to formulate, to form, to outpicture the place that they need a touch. And God, I know that as they've formed the idea that you've already begun to move, that everything needed is moving to answer the prayer. We pray, God, not to change you, but so that we might be profoundly changed, that we might learn to love one another and minister to each other, that we might learn to be open and allow the answers to come in ways that we can understand. God, we have faith. Help our unbelief. For all the prayers and the prayer box, we know for every need there's an answer. We know for every gratitude, God, we are grateful to. Thank you for moving in this church. Thank you for moving in our lives. Thank you for always hearing and always answering our prayers. And we release this prayer with the sure and certain knowledge that all the things that we have asked are already done. So we say thank you 
in the name, with the power and all the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.